Good morning, dear students. Welcome to the first session of the first chapter of your NCERT book, Real Numbers for Class Ten. The syllabus for the chapter is Euclid's Division Lemma and its Applications, Euclid's Division Algorithm, Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic, Proving Irrationality of Numbers like Root Two, etc., Revisiting Decimal Expansions of Rational Numbers. Dear students. By now you are aware of different types of numbers. Can you name a few types? Yes, you are right. Broadly, numbers are of two types: the real numbers and the non-real or the imaginary numbers. Let us have a look at this Venn diagram. Broadly speaking, the real numbers can be divided into rational and the irrational numbers. Now, the rational numbers consist of If you see the innermost portion, you have one, two, three, four, and so on. The counting numbers, that is the natural numbers. If I add zero to it, I get the set of whole numbers. Adding the negative numbers to it, I get the integers. Then adding the rational numbers, if I take up in the form of p upon q, seven upon three, minus five upon nine, the negative and the positive fractions, I get the set of rational numbers. Now these rational numbers. And the irrational numbers, which are of the form of root two, root three, root seven, root five, are called the real numbers taken together. In this chapter, we would be revisiting all facts that we have already learnt about the real numbers. To begin with, let us consider dividing two positive integers. Regarding this, we already know that dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus the remainder. Whenever we wanted to check whether our division is correct or not, we used to find out the divisor multiplied with the quotient and the remainder added to it. That complete result should be equal to the dividend. If it was coming equal to dividend, then it means that the division was correct. A mathematician Euclid was the first one to state this in the following manner. What he stated, we call it the Euclid's division lemma. It states that given two positive integers a and b, there exist unique integers q and r such that a is equal to b q plus r, zero less than equal to r less than b. For example, if I take a to be as seven and b to be as three, can I find a quotient and remainder such that I can represent seven in the form of three q plus r? Just divide seven by three. On dividing, I'll get the quotient equal to two, and the remainder will come out to be one. So seven can be written as three into two plus one. This two is the quotient, and one is the remainder. Clearly, this remainder is greater than zero, but it is for sure less than b. That is, it is less than three. The above stated lemma finds its application in solving different types of problems, as calculating the HCF of numbers, finding relation between the numbers, and so on. Let us have a look at few of its applications. Question number one: Use Euclid's division algorithm to find the HCF of one thirty-five and two twenty-five. Now we will solve this by using the Euclid's division lemma. What is the method? Since two twenty five is greater than one thirty five, we will apply the Euclid's division lemma to two twenty five and one thirty five. So you divide two twenty five by one thirty five, you get the quotient equal to one and the remainder equal to ninety. So two twenty five can be written as one thirty five into one plus ninety. Is the remainder coming equal to zero? No, the remainder is not equal to zero. It is ninety. So we will have to apply the Euclid's division lemma once again. To one thirty five and ninety, and we get one thirty five is equal to ninety into one plus forty five. Now again, the remainder is not coming out to be zero. Remainder is forty five here, so we will apply the Euclid's division lemma for the third time to ninety and forty five to find out whether the remainder is coming zero or not. If we divide ninety by forty five, I know ninety is equal to forty five into two. And the remainder is zero, so I can write ninety equal to forty-five into two plus zero. Since the remainder is equal to zero, the HCF of two twenty-five and one thirty-five is equal to forty-five. So what is forty-five? It was the last divisor that I had. Last divisor what I had is the 
HCF of the two numbers. So kindly note that while calculating the HCF using Euclid's division lemma, the last step needs to be handled very carefully. At times, instead of the divisor, the quotient is written as the HCF, which is incorrect. So please keep that in mind. Let us now consider another application of the lemma. I am taking example 2. Show that every positive even integer is of the form of 2q and that every positive odd integer is of the form of 2q plus 1. Think of any even integer. I can take it to be as let's say 48. So 48 can be written as 2 into 24. Similarly, if I take an odd number, if I take it to be as 35. So 35 can be written as 2 into 17 plus 1. So my dear children, every even integer can be written in the form of 2 into some number and some integer and similarly every odd integer can be written as 2 into some integer plus 1. So we will be proving it using the Euclid's division lemma. Let a be any positive integer and b is equal to 2. Please keep in mind this word then by Euclid's algorithm. We have to come down to or we can write then by applying Euclid's division lemma or we can write by Euclid's algorithm a is equal to 2q plus r. Whenever we are writing q and r I need to give the conditions also. Since I have taken b to b as 2 the condition of the remainder was that 0 should be less than equal to r less than 2. So here I will be getting r can be either 0 or r can be 1. So putting r equal to 0 I get a can be 2q or a can be 2q plus 1 if I take the remainder as 1. If a is of the form of 2q then for sure it is 2 into some number that means a is an even integer. Also positive integer can be either even or odd. Therefore any positive odd integer is of the form of 2q plus 1. Now writing of these questions is very important. You will please keep in mind that when you are writing these questions Please understand the important the key words that are to be written. You will first of all assume the value of what is A and what is B. Then according to the value of B you are going to find out the remainder which is going to be keeping in mind 0 less than equal to R less than B. Now once we have found out then I will use A is equal to BQ plus R and write the possible values of A and then I am going to justify the question. Let us take up another example. Question example 3 I am taking. Show that any positive odd integer is of the form of 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 3 where q is some integer. Exactly same way we are going to do it. Now we get a hint what we have to take as b from what is given in the question. It is 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 3. This is a big hint to us that we need to take here b equal to 4 here. Let us start with taking a where a is some positive odd integer. We apply the Euclid's division lemma with a and b equal to 4. Now since 0 less than equal to r less than 4 the possible remainders can be what? Conditions put on r are 0 less than equal to r less than b. That means here since b is equal to 4. So we have 0 less than equal to r less than 4. So the possible remainders are going to be 0, 1, 2 and 3. Then a can be what? a can be 4q plus 0 or 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 2 or 4q plus 3. So I will take the first case when the remainder r is equal to 0. Then a will be equal to 4q which is twice of 2q which is even number. In case 2 I take r is equal to 1 then a is equal to 4q plus 1 which is odd because it is not a multiple of 2. Then I take third case r is equal to 2 and I get a is equal to 4q plus 2 which is twice of 2q plus 1. Twice of any integer is always even so that means a is equal to 4q plus 2 is even. Lastly I take the fourth case where r is equal to 3 then a is equal to 4q plus 3 which is odd. So thus any positive odd integers of the form of 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 3. On the basis of the learnt example let us now take up question 5 of exercise 1.1. A very 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 important example children please understand it carefully. The question number 5 states use the Euclid's division lemma to show that cube of any positive integers of the form of 9m or 9m plus 1 or 9m plus 8. 
So the first thing that comes in our mind is that we can take b equal to 9. But if you think it off, then it's going to be a very, very, very lengthy procedure. So I will try first by taking b is equal to 3. If I am successful in doing that, otherwise then if not, then I will try with b is equal to 9. So let a be any integer and let us take b equal to 3. Then by applying Euclid's division lemma to a and b equal to 3, what do we get? We get a is equal to b cube plus r. Children see it's very important that I write Euclid's division lemma. I have underlined also. So I get a is equal to 3 q plus r. The conditions for r are 0 less than equal to r less than 3. That means r can be 0, 1 or 2. So if I take r equal to 0 which is the first case. I will be getting a will come out to be what 3 q plus 0. Then cubing this I had to prove that cube of any positive integer. So I will cube this. So a cube is equal to 3 q whole cube which will be equal to 27 q cube. 27 q cube can be written as 9 into 3 q cube which is equal to 9 m where m is equal to 3 q cube. So let us take the second case. Second case I take r is equal to 1. If r is equal to 1 then a is equal to what? 3 cube plus 1. Then a cube comes out to be just apply the formula a plus b whole cube. I get a cube will be equal to 3 cube plus 1 whole cube which comes out to be 9 q cube plus 1 plus 9 q plus 27 q square. Now keep in mind I need to prove it equal to 9 m plus 1. So, I will take all the terms from which 9 can be taken as common and I will add 1 to it. Let us see if I take 9 common from 27q cube, 9q and 27q square, I will be left with only 1. So, 9 into 3q cube plus 3q square plus q plus 1 which is of the form of 9m plus 1 where m is some integer which is given by 3q cube plus 3q square plus q. Now let us take the last case r is equal to 2. When r is equal to 2 what do I get? I get a is equal to 3q plus 2 and a cube is equal to 3q plus 2 whole cube which is equal to 27q cube plus 8 plus 36q plus 54q square. This is equal to 27q cube plus 36q plus 54q square plus 8. I can take out 9 common from the first 3 terms and I am left with 9 into 3q cube plus 4q plus 6q square plus 8 which gives me this a equal to 9m plus 8 where m is equal to 3q cube plus 4q plus 6q square. So here I have got in all the 3 cases the cube of any positive integers of the form of 9m which was the first case, 9m plus 1 which was the second case and 9m plus 8 which was the third case. Now the rest of the questions of exercise 1.1 are to be done on your own. I have just taken up a similar question with the question number 4 also. We will just discuss that in brief. Using Euclid's division lemma, show that the square of any positive integer is either of the form of 3m or 3m plus 1 for some integer m. Again, the hint is given to you. What do you have supposed to do? I will suppose let A be a positive integer and B can be taken here to be as 3. If I take B to be as 3 and I apply the Euclid's division lemma, I get A is equal to B cube plus R. Now it's very important for us to write the Euclid's division lemma and taking B is equal to 3, I will get and I get A is equal to 3 cube plus R. So 0 less than equal to r less than 3 that means remainder can be either 0 or 1 or 2. So once again I will be taking up 3 cases. The first case r is equal to 0. I get what? a is equal to 3 cube plus 0 which is equal to 3 cube. So here there we had done cubing the cubes of the positive integers. So here we will just do the square. On squaring I get a square is equal to 9q square which is again of the form of thrice of m where m can be taken as 3q square. Exactly same way I will take up the case 2. Case 2 was what? That a r is equal to 1. Accordingly a comes out to be 3q plus 1. I square both sides and I get a square is equal to thrice of 3q square plus 2q plus 1. 
which is 3m plus 1 where m is equal to 3q square plus 2q last case is so if r is equal to 2 i get a is equal to 3q plus 2 that means squaring both sides i get a square comes out to be 3q plus 2 whole square which simplifies to 9q square plus 12q plus 4 now this 4 can be broken up as 3 plus 1 so i get 3 common i take so 3 into 3q square plus 4q plus 1 and then plus 1 so again it is of the form of 3m plus 1 where m is equal to 3q square plus 4q plus 1 so in all the three cases we have found out that the square of any positive number can be expressed in the form of 3m or 3m plus 1 so again whatever questions are left of the exercise you will try them up yourself i don't think so there should be any problem you may please go through the video once again so that all your doubts can be clarified thank you so much children have a safe and happy day